Good evening, everyone. Uh, Real is going to be joining us uh, shortly, uh, but he has me in his stead until he arrives. I'm just going to wait about uh, just a few more minutes just to give more people to join us. But greetings to everyone that's um, on currently. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Beverly. <laughs> Miss Newsom. <laughs> Hi. Hi, good evening all, good evening. Good evening, who's that? Hi. <laughs> Colleen. Hi, Dexter. We just we were just giving it a little while for some more um, folks to come on. I wasn't going to go beyond seven oh five, but I know this is a <laughs> okay. It's cool. I just laid down here. I had COVID. Oh, I, I you know, definitely send positivity your way. <coughs> hope you, you be well soon. I hope so. <laughs> oh, you're gonna need to know so. You're gonna need to speak <laughs> speak over yourself. I know. Yes. Yes. I ginger tea and the um, garlic and the um, saffron. And so far, I feel much better. But oh my God, this feeling is like, I felt like my heart was falling out. I didn't even know I had COVID. I would just <laughs> had fever. And it was 137. And then I went and I got tested, and the cell was positive. And I feel like when they lay down, certain time of the night, like from six to nine, I'll have fever, and then from probably 10 to 2, I will have like a, a fast beating of my, my heart will be like racing. So I have the meter for my fingers. I keep burning it every minute <laughs> to make sure that, yeah, oh my God, it's the worst feeling to have. Oh, goodness. Again, that's a send healing and positivity your way. Thank you. Okay, we're just going to give it another two minutes now so we can start at 7.05 just to, you know, get some more. We know we usually have a couple of more folks on here with us. Uh, so, I don't know, it's, it's getting warmer. So folks are, you know, getting ready to be outside. So that could be the case, but we're, we're about to start in a minute.
oh, I didn't realize I was muted. I apologize. So you probably didn't hear anything I said. <laughs> um, so I was saying that I called the meeting to order. Um, I actually did that at 7.05, but I guess you didn't know that. <laughs> um, but yes, I did call the meeting to order and started out by just stating our statement, our mission statement, uh, which is uh, the Community Board 9 Education and Library Committee is committed to provide educational advocacy and resources to parents, teachers, educators, and Community Board 9 community schools. All right, so this was confirmed by us in December of 2020. For as housekeeping, we want to definitely give an opportunity for any guests that are on uh, with us right now to be able to uh, make us aware that you're here and uh, give an introduction. So I'm just going to pause and allow if we have any guests with us to definitely um, greet us. Hello everyone. My name is Dante Arnwine. I'm the new district manager of CB9. Um, this is my first opportunity to attend this committee's um, um, meeting. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I, I guess I can't see everyone's faces yet, but you know, it will be nice to be able to put some faces with some names and listen to uh, a very lucrative agenda that you guys have for this evening. So I look forward to, to listening to it. And you know, if I can be uh, of assistance any way possible, please let me know. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're so grateful to be able to have you with us on today. It's a pleasure to have you in our company. And, you know, it's awesome when you can, you know, be on a board where you actually are able to hope vote in, you know, the next person that will be leader for the community. So thank you so much for being here and accepting the call. <laughs> um, to do what you do. Thanks so much. All right, so we have um, no other guests on today. It seems like it is our community, our, uh, our board. Um, it's just us, our committee uh, that's on here right now. Um, we have on the agenda for chairperson report. Um, and, you know, I was saying in the beginning that Real will be joining us shortly. So we'll skip over that for now. As um, far as reviewing open um, action items, I'm guessing we could just go right into, you know, some of the things that we have discussed in the past. And um, let me go to that. We have a couple of things that we were already uh, discussing. And so we can actually go back to just um, getting back to those things that we had been talking about. And um, one of those things is the, uh, we have three, we actually have three uh, things open right now that we were discussing. Um, library presentation, the spelling bee, and a summer resource fair. Um, so um, far as the library presentation, is anyone uh, familiar with that that would be able to speak to that? All right, hearing none, I'm going to go to the, <clears throat> the spelling bee. I know that we have Beverly on the line. I believe you were on uh, for the spelling bee information. <clears throat> um, I was Melanie, but I don't really know where we are, unfortunately. The mm. last time a letter was being sent out in regards to the um, schools and to the principals, but a kit was supposed to go with it as well. I'm not familiar with the kit, and I don't know if the letter was completed and sent out because I wasn't part of the formation of the letter. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, thank you so much. So, so a letter was sent out and it was going to the different schools. That um, was the plan. The plan was for the letter to be created. And I, um, it was created because I did see the draft of it, but I don't know if it's been submitted yet. But along with the letter, the schools um, were going to receive a kit directing them on what the competition would look like within their school, um, what the deadlines were, what the presentation, once they finished with the competition in their school, it, they would have a contact person. It was also telling them to have a contact person that would be the intermediary between their school and CB9 Spelling Bee Committee. So those are just some of the things that were contained within the letter. Um, if we met those deadlines, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I, I wasn't 
part of that process. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. That was a good recap. It sounds like it was going to be great. It, well, it sounds like in a, it's in the works to be great. That's actually what, what was going to be my next question. Right, for it is in the works, time. and I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. No, no. I was just, um, I was just saying. Um, my question, my next question was going to be about the deadlines. Um, like, what was the target date that um, we were looking at to be able to June do it? Was gonna, June was June was going to be the spelling bee. Mm -hmm. um what date in june that was still up in the air um as to the pacific date because the schools were asked to get back to us um at a certain time with the winners of the spell of mm -hmm. bees within their school and mm -hmm. then um because that because once they did that then the spell of bee would be the fi final final spell of bee would be done by cb9 spell of bee team mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I like the sound of that. You said spelling bee team. CB9 spelling bee team. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Was anybody else? I don't know what else to call it. Honey. Yeah. No, I like that. That's cool. Was there anybody else on the um, that subcommittee for um, the spelling um, bee team? It's myself. It's myself. It's Riel. And, oh, dang. I can't remember the other person's name. Cause she was the one who wrote the letter. Mm. I'm sorry, Melanie. I don't remember the third person's name. Okay. Well, um, I well, heard it before the end of the meeting, though. I'll have it before oh. the end of the meeting. Oh, awesome. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Okay. All right. So, um, what we will do? Does anybody else have anything uh, pertaining to the spelling bee right now? If not, we'll move on. I'll just give it a minute. Melanie, I just want to say that I did volunteer to be a part of the committee, but I was not here at the last meeting. So if you guys mm -hmm. would still like for me to join the committee, I would be more than glad to help support the Spelling Bee team. I did put my name on that list. Awesome. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank All you. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So everybody that doesn't know, that is Miss Demetria Farrow, mm -hmm. our awesome book fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should say specialist or point person or facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so um, the next thing that we have besides the book fair, well, well, besides the spelling bee is the book fair. I know we talked about um, potentially make it into a resource fair. Um, so um, I don't know if I'm skipping ahead because you know these are, you know, I was at reviewing the open action items. And I know these are things that we have been taking action on, things that we want to have come to pass. So that's why I'm talking about them. <laughs> so, but I do see them listed in our agenda under the subcommittee um, reports and projects. So it, I guess we're, we're all set, we're all good. Um, so I guess we can go there, uh, Demetria. Um, what say you <laughs> pertaining to um, book fair for June? Okay, I'm gonna take a look at my notes, um, but from the date that was already set, I'm pretty much ready to, we're, we're ready to, um, move forward with the book giveaway because we have a large number of books already um, at CB9's office on Nostrand Avenue. And then I have also two large box of books here at my house. And we also won a lottery. We won a prize and I have to go to Long Island and pick up those books. So we have more than enough books ready for the next book giveaway. And we have supplies left from the last book giveaway, including pencils, pens, highlighters, bookmarks, and some other items that students can use to help learn and grow during this uh, remote learning pandemic, um, summer vacation, or you know anything they want to use it for. But we still have a lot of resources. So I am ready to go. Um, whenever, whatever the date is, I just have to look back at my notes to remind myself of the date in June. Mm -hmm. 
because I wasn't here the last meeting. So I have to go back and just double check, but we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. awesome. everything. I'll go to Long Island and pick up the books the week before the event. Awesome. And, you know, if you need help with any of that, I mean, we're, we're, we're a whole committee, so I don't want you to feel that. I mean, you did an amazing job last time, but I don't want you to feel, you know, alone in this. Um, so, you know, if you need any, you know, additional hands helping pick up items, you know, make us aware, let it be known, you know, so that, you know, we can get, you know, volunteers to be able to, to help with pickup and, you know, and drop off or anything like that. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I have two teenage children at home and they have been helpful with moving the books and coming with me to pick it up. And so awesome. I'm trying, but thank you so much for the offer. Awesome, awesome. So we had, thank you so much. Um, was there anything else uh, pertaining to the book fair giveaway that anybody else wanted to share or ask any questions or pertaining to it? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, um, you know, once you find out the date in June, if you want to let our uh, district office know, shoot us an email. And if you need anything from us, you know, we'll do our absolute best to, to assist you. Um, even if it's moving the books to the front of the office to make it more accessible to get them later, just just let us know. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I Melanie. Uh huh. Her name was Lorianne Worsley. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's not with us on today. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's good. No, we know we know the players. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. So yeah, so we um, so I'm interjecting now. <laughs> so we did we pretty much discussed the three things that have been you know, for the most part, op open action items for us. Um, but I can go into talking about, well, I'll go back to the agenda, go back to the agenda and just um, make sure everybody's on the same page. So we did have on the agenda for there to be a presentation from the Department of um, Design and Construction uh, having to do with the Eastern Parkway Library Branch. Uh, as far as I know, they're not on the line. If you are on the Zoom right now, if you can make us aware of your presence so that we can um, go about having the presentations, that would be awesome. So I'm just going to give a moment. If there's anyone here from the Eastern Parkway Library branch. Okay, hearing none, uh, we would then go into our subcommittee reports and projects, but we did discuss them as they were somewhat part of our open action items. Um, and Dexter, I feel bad even making you chat. I mean, for you to be on here with us right now is dedication that, I mean, certainly you could be excused so you can get the rest that you need. Uh, but if if you want to chat <laughs> related to social media, uh, you're welcome to do so. Okay, so um, in social media, I was able to access the um, account and I did send an email back after the last meeting asking anyone if they had anything to post on Instagram, etc. because even like Facebook, you can post, you can add stuff to the Facebook, um, the community board nine Facebook, but no one said anything to me, so I had nothing to post. Okay, I see that our chair, thanks so much, Dexter, um, Mr. Roberts. I see that our chair, uh, Real uh, Pierre Booms is on, so I'm going to hand it back over to him. No, no, no need to hand it back, just keep going, it's fine. No, I'll, um, uh, I'll continue to participate. Um, just keep moving, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I apologize for being late, uh, guys. It's at, uh, get my kids fed and ready and have to step in unexpectedly. So, <clears throat> but I'm here now. Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, so Dexter was just um, speaking in reference to social media. Um, you were looking for um, someone to get back to you, Dexter? Yeah. Uh, no, I said that I got access, I got access to the Facebook, etc. I, I went to post whatever that I saw. But you were, the post, so. And I sent an email out asking any of you guys if you had anything to 
post on Instagram or on Facebook to send it to me, but no one sent anything. It means that no one had anything to post. Okay, forgive me. You know, I will admit I did see that. I didn't have anything at the time. You know, for me, it was all about Jackie Robinson Day. Okay. <laughs> That's another thing. I think that, was, that already happened. That already happened um, from when you put that out. That definitely would have been one of them. But yeah, but I No, the I, Jackie I Robinson was behind after the same day you had, yes, yeah, after the Jackie Robinson I had access. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, that was, okay. yeah. Uh huh. I would have I jumped off. <laughs> And Mr. Robert, we we talked about um, I'm not sure. Um, I think Mia responded to that to see whether separately we should move towards a um, a Facebook group as well or Facebook page. Did Kalita Mia responded to that email at some point? Okay, I'll reach out to to Mia and um, inquire about it. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know who which one of the groups currently has both. I know youth has a has an Instagram channel. <clears throat> um, and um, but I don't think they have a separate, you know, Facebook page either. Um, and I'm not sure if that's Arca something City that can Paris be set up. Arca City Community Board 9 is the page. The way the page is designed, you could actually add things to the community on it. So you doesn't really need access to it, um, direct access to If you had information, because I went on the page, if you have information, you could actually post on it. They didn't receive <coughs> you, because I guess that they are monitoring what gone. So if it's not something that's appropriate, they will bump it out, I think. OK. <coughs> Mr. Manager, is that is that correct? Is, is, is there something going on in Facebook that, um, that we should, uh, that is helpful for the committees? Um, yeah, I can take a look at the first um, You know, really, it could be down to the decision of the committee. If you guys want to have something separate, uh, I'll work with the staff to set that up. Um, Khalid is more versed in Facebook than I, so if you know how to add pages or add content, you know, we have no problem, problem doing that. Uh, stream out that content, send it directly to the, uh, the, the, the office. Uh, but, if you guys, you know, let us know exactly what you want, we'll we'll figure out something um, that that will satisfy what you're looking for. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we we can you know kind of early stages building out this um, building out the social media presence, right? So for for CB9 education, so um, it is definitely an, an an additional step we can take. And then we just gotta, gotta continue to build the following on the uh, on the uh, on both of the channels. All right, I will discuss with Khalid and Mia uh, all right, and see what we can do. Um, if, you know, if, if it's just as simple as adding you guys adding your content to uh, the regular page, okay. But if not, we gotta go different step. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know exactly what I can find out and what we have the capacity to do, and then. You, know, you guys can make the decision and, and we'll roll from there. Great. <clears throat> and if I might also add to that, um, yes, same with our youth services committee, like any information you want for me to put up on the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter account, and also on the weekly glass, just please send it over to the office and we'll always, you know, add that and um, add it to the uh, scheduled posting. That's great. Thank you. Austin. So the next person we actually have is for real, actually, in reference to the principal school outreach. Um, but we did actually skip over the chairperson's report because we wanted to go over that. Are you are you muted, Rio? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I um, oh, oh, am I? Did you lose? Did I lose you for a second? Yeah, we can hear you now, though. Okay. Yeah, my internet connection drops sometimes. Okay, here we go. Um, that the the city has um, uh, rolled out a very large summer school um, uh, summer camp initiative called Summer Rising. Uh, in case you've heard of this, um, so that is something that we can. 
uh, each in their own way, uh, spread the word on. That is something that we can certainly push out and the community board should push out on social media um, for the community to be aware of. The, the, the schools have information for their family members and hopefully have distributed that for their family members uh, for kids to be able or families to be able to sign up their, uh, their child for summer rising. It's, uh, it's several weeks throughout the summer. It's a, a combination of uh, school work, academic work with DOE teachers and uh, local CBOs who run a summer camp component in the afternoon. Uh, it's 100% free. Um, I believe it's six weeks or so. I, I um, the, the that detail escapes me for a moment. Um, but um, and the city has very aggressive plans. They want to enroll two hundred thousand students in this program um, for the summer. And um, you know, I, I you know, the, I, I'm, I'm skeptical that that's possible. Um, just you know, strictly based on the fact that sixty percent of the uh, of the whole DOE system is still remote at the moment, right? Uh, and so that's still a lot of kids that are still remote, and I don't necessarily understand why they would now decide to become, you know, go in person again if it's in the summer and start going into the buildings. But that is a free option available for uh, for families, including families in CB nine, and so. Um, we can make everybody aware of that. And, and Dexter, I can send you uh, their announcement if we can uh, uh, into the CB9 office as well. That's something that we should promote to the community. Yeah, I was going to put it in a chat, but unfortunately, it is disabled. <laughs> oh, yes, I think that was that's an issue. That is is that is that a standard thing now, uh, uh, Ms. Armine? Is that uh, the, without the chat, or is that a temporary issue? So what we're doing is we're looking to see um, what's advantageous um, for the other committees. The chat does not seem to serve the purpose um, that it's meant for. So we're just taking a look to see, okay, what's good, what's not, and then we'll roll back around to it and say, okay, this is good, this is not. So right Understood. now it's not, not a complete standard, but we're just looking to see what works and what doesn't. Understood. I think you um, have, what's the name of the God. summer program again? It's called Summer Rising. Rising. Mm -hmm. Summer Rising. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. And a world development um, last week, Monday. So they are taking enrollments. <clears throat> uh, but look, I, I got to tell you, right, it, uh, has anybody heard of Learning Bridges? Learning Bridges was the large DUE initiative that. Um, um, that uh, was rolled out for remote learning support centers for students who were partially remote or you know, blended setups. Um, yeah, the, the, that was also very aggressive, very um, um, uh, comprehensive. And in the end, the DOE enrolled 15,000 students. That was it. You know, and um, thank you. Um, and so, um, you know, that was also an initiative that, that affected essentially citywide, and they only were able to attract 15,000 students, which I think is a pittance against, you know, the number of kids in blended learning. And, and so I don't necessarily see how Summer Rise would do any different, but, you know, we're about to find out. What's the goal in the mission? Um, it is it is essentially summer recovery. It's a combination of, well, no, it's all summer recovery, uh, but it's not only academic recovery. It's also social emotional recovery. And that's why they paired an academic component with a, um, uh, with a, um, uh, a social emotional camp style component. So it's supposed to be some academics in the morning and then the CBOs, uh, the, the, you know, the nonprofits take over for the afternoon program. Uh, but all of it is in and around uh, the city, uh, in and around the DOE building, as far as I know. Um, and it's also not in every DOE building. It's only in DOE buildings that currently have a city contract for city for summer services already. So um, the, the two programs that that entails, one of them is called Compass uh, After School System, and the other one, I think, Beacon. I think those two are the ones that are running the summarizing components. So instead of their usual kind of summer components, their summer component is now summarizing. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and again, I'll, I'll send that out as well, unless you have some, oh, we can't put it in a chat. We'll send something out so that can be promoted by the, both the board and our own channels as well, or the uh, youth channels. Um, and that as far as the, the principal outreach that have you know, been 
terribly dragging our feet on that um, because I'm uh, supposed to get some feedback from CB8 um, because we're going to do that together. I do think that um, uh, that now kind of the dust is settling. There is there is very little information at the moment. <clears throat> and Naomi, I'm not sure. I, I've not been able to um, to check in on the on CEC 17, so I'm not sure if there's an update. But I don't have a lot of information on what September is going to look like, uh, and it doesn't seem that there's a lot of, of information out there necessarily whether, you know, in, how and in what capacity schools are going to operate. The report a couple of weeks ago from the mayor was that the schools were going to operate in full again or you know, on a full schedule, plus a 100% remote option available um, and a... You cut out again. Yep, you you cut out <laughs> real, but your heart. Um, but that that was happening to me at at work today as well. It was it was. Listen, I just went and took a nap. I was just like, you know what, this is. <laughs> But you just look muted now. Yes, story of my life. I know where you where I lost you. It's fine. We can move on. Yeah, um, still working to 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 get it together. Yeah. So so as far as the the schools go, because there is still so much unknown about September as to how they're going to operate. I think this is a good time for principals to finally turn their attention to what their needs might be in the upcoming year. Um, kudos to our principals for having made it through this mess. Um, and hopefully uh, by September, we'll go back to a more regular operation. Um, and then have one more item that I'm going to um, uh, engage CB, the CB, CB9 and surrounding community boards on as well. Um, I've, I've spoken about this before at the meeting here. <clears throat> um, the DUE at the beginning of the pandemic um, made changes to its usual third party permitting fees, extended use. Uh oh. Uh oh. I wonder which service is doing this to us today. Is it all of you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. My 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 internet keeps kicking in and out. And um, I'm just going to switch to a different signal for a second and see. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. If we had that chat, hint, hint, that might help. <laughs> I think we could just fit it in under um, decorum um, and, and you know, um, and then we have to remember people haven't seen each other in a long time. And this is usually the time when they're actually able to communicate, but I'll send a letter to the office. <laughs> um, I know one of the things that we were also talking about was being able to have um, a way to communicate. Um, other than email, because I know that was an issue for us. Um, and Aril was talking about um, getting with our offices to see if there's a protocol that we have to use pertaining to that. Uh, so is there a protocol that's supposed to be used for that? I am not familiar of any formal or official protocol. Um, because I know some you people use black, some people use, um, you know, like different methods to be able to um, communicate out of uh, um, team meetings. But, you know, some people, they'll do what's, WhatsApp, you know, so there's different avenues. So, you know, with permissions, we wanted to be able to go forward to make sure that we're able to be productive um, as opposed to just meeting once a week, um, excuse me, once a month. And that's the only communication that we're able to have besides depending upon 
emails when folks are already getting hundreds of emails. Um, so if there's no official, then it looks like we would be able to go forward with, you know, whatever method we decide to to use to help us to be able to communicate outside of meetings. Yeah, I, I do not know of any official um, method, but, you know, I think that's a really good question. Let me do some digging and I can back to you. you you just brought up WhatsApp, and that's actually a very clever way of of being able to discuss, you know, committee business. So maybe every committee has a WhatsApp. Actually, very clever. Let let me do some digging, and I, I I'll get back to you. On. Awesome, thank you. That's something that we discussed um, in our last meeting, and you know, WhatsApp one of them um, that came up. That's actually how Real was able to contact me today. <laughs> so Real, um, you were discussing that um, before you you got um, your internet drop. You were discussing that public schools were extended. What? What was extended? So so the DOE made changes to the extended use permit fees. So when a nonprofit runs an after school program, they need to uh, get a permit for to be in the building. There's fees associated with that. Those fees, uh, in some cases, uh, get paid for by the school. In some cases, they get waived by the city. But when it's a private you know, nonprofit, you know, a third party, or a state program, state-funded program, et cetera, those fees stand. At the beginning of the pandemic, the DUE tripled those fees with the, exp with the explanation that uh, that was due to additional cleaning protocols and additional need for security. Now we knew, and this is in the fall mostly when this played out, that that is absolute nonsense. I, um, our principals told us that there is no additional security scheduled, there is no additional cleaning scheduled, and yet providers were, were charged fees. I just spoke to a, a provider a couple hours ago, and this happens to be one in Harlem, who just got a $200,000 bill for their summer camp fee because they have to pay, um, uh, what was it? Something, something in the order of five thousand dollars per day, right? Five thousand dollars per day, sorry, right? And have about a forty-day camp. Um, <clears throat> and the long and the short of it is, it is, it is really hurting nonprofits. Um, it is keeping organizations from um, from operating. Plain and simple. And so um, I, I, I'm going to work this week and then for the next weeks on beating the drum on that again, reaching out to all our local community boards um, and our, uh, our local council members uh, to bring attention to this issue. It is something that has really not gotten to the level of attention that it requires. The city instituted this out of nowhere. They can uninstitute it out of nowhere. Um, and, um, and at this point, you know, the, the, the nonprofits that serve the kids of the city should not be charged exorbitant fees uh, to do their jobs. And so, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll engage with the CB9 community on this and, and some of the other providers in the area. But Riel, I thought um, the borough president implemented, <clears throat> is, this, is this the same program that the borough president implemented that, that not-for-profits could use those schools at when the schools weren't, um, in service at a discounted rate or, or right well, that 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 is that is that thing that addressed that thing but that was pre-pandemic so my understanding is that that is currently not applicable anymore um that also applied only to very small nonprofits. so your budget had to be uh, uh, under a certain threshold um, and uh, and so um, it, it didn't apply to most nonprofits, uh, to be honest. I also don't think that runs anymore. That was that was pre-pandemic. And schools but, weren't really a fan of that in the first place. The they were not. No, there were a couple of facilities because we are a small not-for-profit that I tried to access their services, and they pretend they no, we can't do that. So schools didn't really like it, even though the borough president um, implemented it to make the schools have more use during their off hours, but schools didn't care for it. Right, right. Yeah, and look, and it is entirely likely that the DUE also now really wanted to limit the number of additional providers in the building, right? Except that's not the way it was communicated. And the way it was communicated was we need, we need to charge this because we have, we have uh, additional expenses and it's simply not so. 
um, <clears throat> and um, the argument of, of budget shortfalls is also no longer true. That was true in the fall, but there are significant amounts of funding streaming into the school system, you know, federal funding, large, large numbers. There is no reason for the DOE to charge these kinds of fees. It is one of those hurdles that keeps organizations from operating. And at this point, the DOE should do whatever it can, it can to, to you know, clear the deck so um, you know, small nonprofits can operate. And I'll tell you, and this is for my own organization, but I know a number of others are, are facing the same thing. We can get into the, into the, um, into the DOE buildings either because the principals think they're not allowed, it's not true, they are allowed, or um, the, the the fees are so high, but that's where a lot of summer camps run. Right? And right. so summer camps are, are, are scrambling to find space um, and, they, and they can't operate because they can't go to school. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so you know, I'll, I'll follow up uh, again with the CB9 office as well, and I'll, uh, I think um, Mr. Cummings, um, um, you're from uh, uh, Councilman Bampley Samuel's office, I believe, right? Um, I, um, uh, I'll reach out to the council member offices again as well, because I, I wholly believe that if the right, if we can get the right amount of attention to it, I, I don't think there's a council member or you know or, or a city. Uh, uh, city official in the world who looks at it and goes, yeah, that's reasonable. It's not reasonable and, and it ought to change. Where is the <clears throat> summarizing, where are the summarizing programs going to be? They're going to be in the schools as well? They're going to be in the schools as well. Okay. And that's city programs, so they don't, they have the, those fees waived automatically. Right. Because right. they run under city, uh, like Compass or Beacon programs. Um, yeah, I, that's all I had, Bonnie. Okay. Um, Rio, could you give more detail about the spelling bee, please? Um, well, we're getting there, I think, right? So, so Rio, here, I just want to um, catch him up a little bit. So, Rio, I don't know if you were on the call, um, but under open action items, we actually talked about those three um, different areas that have been, you know, um, uh, that we've been taking action on. And so spelling B was one of them. And Beverly was sharing about the letter um, that was prepared and she wanted to know follow up in reference to um, the letter that was uh, created for it to be then submitted to uh, schools. I wasn't sure where the letter, where we are with the letter. And if the kit in the letter, a kit is mentioned that was gonna be submitted to the schools giving them the logistics on how the spelling bee should be run inside of their schools and what deadline they were to meet so that we would be ready as a spelling bee committee to facilitate the final component of the competition. But I wasn't familiar with, with those details. So, um, but the committee, I'm asking you to fill the committee in because I don't know that part. Well, um, why am I blanking on, on, she's not on the call today. Um, Lorianne? Who's working? Lorianne, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Lorianne uh, had prepared a flyer and I prepared a, a, an outline of a, um, of an event, a spelling bee event. Now, um, you know, early May, I think it is doable uh, to, um, and I want to pull it up for a second so I can refresh my mind on the, are we able to share screens? Uh, there it is. Uh, is screen share an option? Uh, or not, uh, oh, I can, right? Looks like it. There we go. Yes, you can, Real. In the center, you should just see it. There you go. Yep, there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> so can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. So the suggestion. So the first thing is like, I think for us to, to discuss whether we can get this done, right? Uh, whether you know, because I, it is not something that I can carry by myself. I would need a significant uh, amount of help just to, to get this organized, um, and uh, I'll be able to you know leverage somebody 
educators on my on my uh, on my office as well, just to help us develop some of these materials. But I think there's enough time provided that we can get schools to to sign up. The final version of the flyer that Lorianne built based on this information, um, uh, I have not received yet, um, and that needs to because there was one question around the the prize winner winners. Um, we had suggested uh, Amazon gift cards, a green light bookstore gift card, and then um, Lorianne suggested a $20 Amazon gift card for a third prize. Um, and, um, but, you know, we need to get this to the schools right away and see if anybody's interested in signing up. And I think hi, that, you know, is, oh, I'm sorry. Go well, go ahead. Oh, hi, this is Naomi. How y'all, how y'all doing everyone on the call tonight? Hi, Naomi. Hi. I was wondering how are we going to um, disseminate the information to the schools um, in this time period? That's my first question. And the second question is that um, if, if we're going to do it, you know, there's going to be some graduations coming up in June for the fifth grade because that, you know, that's a graduating class. So we probably for the fifth graders to participate, we probably would want to know what their graduation date is because every school might not have the same graduation date. Great point. Great point. You know, my son is a fifth grader. He's graduating on June fifteenth, and he's in, uh, in in this district. Um, you know, we could certainly just to play it safe, push it into push it towards the end. I mean, what because. I mean, fifth graders, they, uh, they don't have a whole lot to do anymore in school, right? Uh, I think teachers have kind of gotten to the end of the rope as well. So if they have, if they have something fun to do, that, that might actually incentivize them to participate. If we, you know, if we push it later into, into the second, you know, like the third week of June. I can't remember what, uh, what date did I say here? June 16th. Yeah. Um, and you have it from five to seven. Because if you're talking about fifth graders, they're really tuned out right now. You know, <laughs> they're not really trying totally. to do any. Totally. <laughs> Yeah, no, but this should be fun, right? It shouldn't be extra work. Uh, uh, this should be an enjoyable thing to do where they don't have to work too hard. Um, I, um, but, you know, it also kind of, you know, if, if, uh, if, if the fifth grade, because theoretically we could do, we, we have a number of grades. And if, uh, if you have, uh, you know, one participant from each school um, that they selected through their own process, that gives you a good number of kids to begin with. So, um, but all the bonds of how many schools are willing to participate. So, I mean, I think the, you know, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, would it be possible probably to um, um, get in touch with the district offices of the schools in the community and have, and have the, um, the family leadership coordinator help out with passing those along to the parent coordinators to the school because it might you might get a better feel for that because it's working through the district off i mean it's really coming from us but it's going to work through the district office so they might have some people already in mind that you know we can have uh, more access to okay it's a good idea how how so who would it need to be sent to is this um uh, what, district 17's talking, office? We're talking about 17, right? District we're talking 17? about 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, it will be um, Mr. Mr. Lewis, Mr. Lewis Thomas. He's the family leadership coordinator. I can send, I'll send his email address to you and then, you know, okay. we can go from there. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So, so how about this? I, I'll send... Let's stick to these dates for a moment. Um, and um, I'll have uh, Lorianne finish up the flyer, you know, hopefully you know, by tomorrow, and I'll get that sent out. Um, and at the same time, we'll have uh, me and Khalid send it to our District 17 list of schools. If they get it from you know, both sides, then you know, I think maybe it'll increase the chances that it's actually going to show up when somebody's going to see it. 
um, and then let's first see whether we can get signed up and give it a week to see if, if there's schools who are interested in signing up um, for this. Um, and, you know, if we, you know, just, just chime in here if you can. How many schools will we need to participate to, for it to be, you know, for, for it to be a, a good event? Five? It would be good if we had, um, first of all, I, I'm not familiar with how schools run myself. How, how, um, how does that work? Middle schools compete. Do fifth graders compete with eighth graders? No. Okay. So, so we would have, have two schools in fifth, two schools in sixth, and two schools in seven. No, it says you know for a school will participate can nominate one person for each grade to the finals, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Um, and depending on the number of schools, let's say if you have five schools, right, you might be able to say to the school, you can dispatch two per grade because, you know, then we have some volume for the final event. And I, I indicated that in the sign up as well, that the number of finalists they can send per grade would depend on the number of schools that participate. If you have 10 schools participate and then you have, you know, two finalists per grade, it ends up being a very large number uh, way fast. And I don't think that's practical. So how would, how would schools like, how would schools um, compete against each other though? So I have a fifth grader and I have a sixth, a seventh grader. Would they, when they got to the final, the CB9 final, would, right. could they possibly be competing against each other as far as words go? No. So this is what I'm thinking. I don't think so. Besides, we're only going to do elementary grade. So, so uh, K through five. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, and so uh, if a school participates with five different schools, they send each two fifth graders, right? Now I have 10 fifth graders. They compete against each other. 10 fourth graders compete against each other. Got it. And so the sign up that I created asks the school to you know, sign up, assign a liaison, a teacher that we communicate it with, communicate with. That teacher will going to send a, uh, a a kit on how to organize this in school. Um, and uh, and then you know they're really after the races. They need to do but the, the um, you know do it at school, and they can do that in a suggested week or earlier. But then there's a deadline before you know, uh, or which point they have to send us the names and the contact information for their finalists. So that would be in the kit that the teacher receives. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um. Are there any teachers on our committee? Isn't Dimitri a teacher? I'm not sure. Yes, I am. So I, which, which grade do you teach, Dimitri? So right now I'm a middle school teacher, but also what grade is that? that's sixth grade. But also um, in the past, I did the district-wide spelling bee for 17... And then I did 17, 18, and I think it was 20 or 21. But what I did in the past is I prepared a package of words and in that folder with the rules and the words um, by grade per school, I distributed the information to each school with the words so that the students could be studying this way it's a competition, but also the children are learning as well because they're studying those words to prepare to compete. And I did the spelling bee by grade. So I had um, all of the first graders compete, all of the second graders compete against each other. This way it was fair and it was uh, more, um, they're competing against their own peers. And then I winners, from those grades and I let them compete against each other also at the end. So the first competition was just a grade competition. And um, the superintendent secretary in district 17 office, Mary Rivera, she can send a blast out 
to the entire district with the flyer. Um, <coughs> I don't know how the school buildings are right now. Um, I am working with both. I don't know how um, much participation there can be during the still the um, still in the lockdown kind of right. So I'm not yeah, I mean, we could do it and we couldn't do it in person. Yeah, so I'm but just saying, I'm not really sure how much participation, but I remember getting a lot of schools, I don't know, at least 17 or 18 schools did participate. I have to look back at my notes. But I have a folks I can share with you guys with um, the spelling bee rules. I have the words. I have... Um, the program I have, so you can see all the schools who participated in the past. I have a binder, a portfolio, like a binder that has a lot of information that I can share with you guys, just to give you a little push. So you can see um, what happened in the past. And then, you know, for planning purposes, um, how to go. The only thing that's different now is the fact that there's a lot of students who are not in the building and we have to get them on board as well. So I'm not really sure how much participation because at that time we had the spelling bees at MS61. And um, I don't know, we had like about 500 people trying to turn out and it was really big. So I'm not really sure. Um, I can share the information with everyone. You guys could take a look and pick, That's and pull out what you want to do or you like the ideas and what you don't like, you could toss it. You could do that too. Yeah. So let's let's see if we can get the sign up done first. Naomi, would you mind repeating that name for me? The, because I know Mary Rivera and I can certainly email her as well. Who's the person you mentioned? Um, uh, Mr. Lewis, he's um, yes. Filton Lewis Thomas. I just sent you his, um, I just emailed you his information with yeah. the office number and his email address. He's the family leadership coordinator. He can get you in contact with all the um, parent coordinators in the school, in, in the schools of District 17. So the parent coordinator in the school would know who is remote and who is in the schools. They have that information. So um, depending yeah, right. on how you want to um, work it, you can go through him and he can give you, you know, give you some feedback on what you um, have, uh, what needs to be done, because he's also affiliated with the president's council of, you know, of all the PTAs, all the PTA presidents. Great. So he'll be a good resource to use to try to try to maneuver and get what you know, what we want done in this short period of time, or maybe, um, you know, later on down the line or whatever. Yeah, great. Um, okay, well, I think the first bridge to cross to see if we can get some sign up, right? Um, Melanie, should we try to uh, kind of um, run ahead on this and, and, uh, and test out a, um, a, a WhatsApp communication group for this? Oh, you're frozen. If the subcommittee, oh, it looks like you just got frozen. I'm not frozen. <laughs> uh, as far as the you're subcommittee fro for the spelling bee, yeah. Or, you know, I mean, I know um, that our district manager was saying that he would get back to us on it, and he felt that that would be a good idea. And, you know, everybody else seemed like they would be in agreement with it. So, yeah, spelling bee committee. Ms. Armwin, Armwin, can we test that out for, um, this, uh, for this purpose? Can you can you give me one day to, to figure out the legalities of it? I just want to make sure yep. you can open meetings law and all that. That yep. is something, yeah, I'd hate for you to do it and then, so. Understood. understood. All right, yep. appreciate it. So who is joining this subcommittee? Because it is, it is me, it is Lorianne, it is Beverly. Um, can I just say, you know, why don't we go all hands on deck? We have two potential events, right? This one and the um, a resource fair, a book fair, which we also still have to discuss. Well, I agree that all hands on deck helps to get things done. And yes, I'm being a little sarcastic. I'm not going to lie. But yes. <laughs> you can add me onto the list. No, that's fine. Thank you, Dimitri. 
can we can we discuss can we create a vision of what that looks like because right now we're discussing two things one we're discussing the packet two we're discussing the logistics on the teacher's side the packet is on the committee side because it hasn't been distributed yet creating it and what's going to be in it and two discussing the logistics on the teacher's side what it what is it the teacher is going to be expected to do so can we discuss those two visions please what i can do is i can oh, share, something outside of that if you guys want i could share like some information to give you some ideas in terms of expectations and, and see if that's something you like and agree to and if everyone agrees to that um you could use that information, you know, you can use that as a guide. You can use it as a guide to um, what the expectations are on the teacher side, as well as on the um, committee side. I'm kind of like on both sides, but I could share with you what it's like on both sides, if you, if you want. And that will help give you um, a balance and a way to decide what you want to do move forward. Does this because this was, this will be a virtual event, event, correct? The final version, yes. So um, going back to what Dimitri said, how are we going to, let's just say, um, when the kids begin to spell, which is why um, Community Board 8 said we opt out, because they opted out because they couldn't um, envision the um, honesty of it. So um, how, how do we envision virtually the, the, let's start with that part. How do we envision, I, I, I'm a kid, I'm in, my, I'm, in my, I'm in my room or I'm in front of my parents and I'm spelling coincidence. How does community board envision the kid doesn't have it laying open in a book on his desk or Googling it on his or her phone or having a, it, it, an alternate source. How do we envision that? I'm, back, I'm gonna back up for one, one second and then okay. I'll, I'll try to answer that question. So there are three moving parts, right? One, sign up. Right. I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that this week and, and we'll see if in a week from now, we ha actually have sign up. Two is the packet and the teacher logistics so they can run their own events and select their finalists. Uh, Demetria is gonna share her information and based on that, we'll put something together and it has to be simple. He's also, you know, I, I think we want to give teachers enough information. We also don't want to um, uh, micromanage them, right? They're, you know, right. They're, some of them might be perfectly capable of doing that themselves. And then three is organizing the final event. Now, to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. But Riel, don't we need to answer that question before we begin on the other things? I think because if, um, Peter, if Peter's going to cheat, it's not fair to Sarah and it's no. not fair to Jake. If Peter's going to cheat and Sarah and Jake take pride in being honest, if we can't solve that. Can, can, can I interject? I, I'm, this is Naomi again. If we're trying to make it fun, um, you know, you I'm not saying Peter that cheats? what you I'm, I'm not saying what you said saying is not right but because of the fact that we're still in a pandemic and we want to do a spelling bee some of the rules might be not so strict i'm not saying that okay. i'm not saying that if peter if peter is cheating he's right i'm not saying that but i'm saying that we want to try to make this event where people want to participate you know, and then once the pan, once we can open up some more, then we can put more rigorous rules on it and everything. But we're just trying to get yeah. the people Agreed. to know what. So we saying we don't committee. care Peter cheats. That's what we're saying. No, 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 we don't. But I think you know, we we do whether Peter cheats. But yeah. 
I didn't say Sorry, that. No, I'm just saying mm-hmm. that it has to it, like let's let's just work with the basics, not 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 the rigorous. That's all I'm saying. So what you're saying is right, but don't do it so rigorous because we're in a pandemic and we can't really judge the way that it's usually judged. We have to make some room for, you know, a little bend the rules a little bit. But isn't that the challenge of the spelling bee though? That I is the my spelling hand. bee. My hand is up. I'm sorry, <laughs> Melanie. Go ahead. Sorry. It's all good. So I muted myself and I asked my middle schooler, what do they do at her school? Um, I asked her if they have a spelling bee. And she told me that they did have a spelling bee at her school. And she said that what her school did is they had the parent with the child on the video. And that's how they actually went about their spelling bee. So we had to be able, they had to be able to see the parent and the child on the video when the child did the spelling bee. So that's what they did. So I'm just sharing um, something that a school did uh, and that's how they handled that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Cause, cause I think even though we're calling it Gregorius, the, the ultimate goal in the spelling bee is being able to be challenged by the spelling of the word. That is the spelling bee. That is it. Yes, but it's also, to Naomi's point, it, it's still kind of pandemic, end of the year, so it also should be fun right, and, and playful. So it, I think it's going to be a little bit more relaxed because it is an extraordinary set up an extraordinary circumstance. So, you know, I, I, I don't think it's going to be perfect, but I think the goal should be just to, you know, to get a fun event done for our community. You know, and if it's not perfect, it's fine. You know, we're not, we're not gambling away on hundreds of dollars here. Um, and I love that idea, by the way, to have the parents sitting right next to, next to them. Yeah. You know, listen, in my experience, the vast majority of people, right, they participate in this kind of thing in good faith, you know, and, and um, um, they'll, uh, you know, they'll, they'll take it seriously. Well, I saw some gingerbread houses this past Christmas that those kids did not be <laughs> up Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll hear from... Uh, I'll, from- make you la- I'll make you laugh. I just came off of a, a um, paint paint uh paint little thing for my at my child's school and we just had okay hold on one second we just had a paint a paint day a paint night for the parents so i mean it wasn't it wasn't a paint and sip you know i would like to sip but it wasn't a paint and sip it was just a it was just a paint (laughs) and and it was and it was really fun but i'm saying that to say that most of the time, people want to have fun. They don't want to do anything okay, rigorous. Okay, get your, t- get your child. D- no one wants to do anything. Yes, nobody wants to do anything rigorous right now because you know we want to laugh. We want to. We've been we've been doing a lot during this pandemic. You know, being in front of a computer, parents and children as well. So I'm saying that maybe later on we can come up with maybe a not a sip and paint, you know, sip your tea. I don't know what's in your cup, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it, you know, have like something like a paint night that'll bring in, you know, to bring in people, um, um, you know, people, parents, families into the community that want, you know, want to participate and then expect or anticipate what we're going to do next. Because when you make it fun, people anticipate what you want to do next, even if it doesn't have nothing to do with money. Just you. That sounds like that sounds like part of our next year planning. And I think we have definitely talked about spelling bee a bit. I don't know if there was any last things anybody wanted to say about it, but I did want to make sure that we recapped um, real in reference to the book fair giveaway. Oh, yeah, I had fun at the book fair giveaway. I had a ball. I mean, I would love to do it again. Just let me know the time. <laughs> So, real, um, I'm not sure if you were on when we talked about the um, book fair giveaway, um, but um, Ms. Demetria Farrow did update us and make us aware that she's definitely all set to go. Um, but what was the date um, that we specified in reference to uh, the book fair giveaway?
So I guess when you get a chance, uh, real, if you would be able to to make us aware, so we can, so everybody can be on the same page. Sorry, I was on mute. I'm pulling up my notes, um, and I'll be able to see where. Let's see. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Have we set a date yet? Firm date? Yeah. I don't recall. But uh, we said think about think about June twelfth. That was our think about dates. Um, yeah, and we had talked about you know, maybe, maybe you kind of make it into summer reading fair of sorts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, da, 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 da. This is uh, look at April. That does sound familiar, June 12th. Yeah, I believe so. Well, um, I missed the real. There's also um someone in the district office. Um, I forgot her last name. I think it's Henderson, uh, or I might be wrong, but she usually knows what curriculum the schools have. You know what the schools can use. I, can I do okay, wait a minute. Um, what the schools um do for the curriculum? What curriculum they're gonna use? So um, she might be a good resource. Also, I'll get her name. I I just can't have her. I know her first name, but I I forget her sec her last name. I think her name is Deandra. If I'm not mistaken. So we're looking at Saturday, June twelfth, um, for the spelling. Oh, pardon me. We're looking at Saturday, June 12th, potentially for the book fair giveaway and Wednesday. Uh, oh, goodness. Yes. Wednesday, June uh, 16th uh, for the spelling bee. Five to seven. So I'm just making yes. sure everybody's on the same page and aware of what we currently have up um, those dates. Yep. <clears throat> and um, and um, um, and Miss Demetria, you are uh, taking leading the charge on the fair, letting us know what is needed. Yes, um, we already have a large amount of books at CB Nine office on Nostrand Avenue in the back. So those books are already on the table. And I have two additional boxes here at my house. Plus we won a, um, like a lotto that we won some extra free books. I did not pick it up yet because I didn't want to have the responsibility of storing those books for a long period of time. So a week before the event, I will go to Long Island and pick up those extra books that we won. So to make sure that we have, um, an adequate amount of books to give out in the community to the children. So I think we're ready to go because we have the books we have already left over from the last one. We have the orange bags. We have um, school supplies for the children in terms of highlighters, pencils, crayons, uh, journal books, um, bookmarks. I can go to the library and get some additional bookmarks, you know, based on the season, you know, the summer bookmarks. I can pick up those. And if anyone else have ideas that you would like to share of what you would like to see at the book giveaway, um, I see that now you're calling it a resource book fair. Um, so are there any other resources that um, you would like to share with the community at the event that I should prepare for? Yeah, I mean, we we uh, we had kind of played with that idea whether to broaden it, but it certainly doesn't need to be. Um, um, that all depends on to what extent we can attract other resources to to the fair, aware where this is taking. Okay, do you guys want to go with on Nostrand Avenue at CB 9s office like we did before? Do you guys want to go with the same location? I know it worked for us the first time and it was, um, you know, it was good for us to be visual. I know that we liked the fact that, you know, it was a good look for our, for our office, just like 
um, when our district manager um, said that they would be at the subways. I thought that was cool, you know, making the you know community aware. So us being right in front of the office, I think, you know, it's really good, especially as more things are opening up and more folks are coming outside. But we know Notion Avenue is always a, a bustling um, area. Um, I do want to mention that Jackie Robinson School did get her permit for us on that particular um, weekend that we were talking to, you know, that was in a proposal for us to be able to have it. It came a little late, but they did make us aware that they did have that. So they can be a potential resource for the near future if we want to ask them, um, you know, to be able to open that. And that would be a really great space for us to have a resource fair. Uh, but with it being you know, May 11th already. I think it's good for us to be on Ocean. So what do you, what, do we have a consensus for that location? Um, June <coughs> CB9 office at um, all the same time from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m.? I'm okay. I think we set it, we set up, we set it up at 10 and then we started at 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, that sounds, that's fine. I have all the notes and I will ask Mia if she can um, update the flyer with the new date and share it with the community. Fantastic. Awesome. So it's um, 8.17 and I know we still have next year planning on. I know we also have Mr. Maurice Cummings from Alika Samuel's office on here with us. <laughs> Did you want to greet us? Did you want to greet us kind sir? <laughs> Mr. Cummings, I guess he, he, he must have stepped away. He must have stepped away. Yeah, he'll, uh, maybe he'll join us shortly. Guest? Hello, soul. Good evening, how's everyone? Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, I was trying to join or come in, I think the last time, but something was happening with the link and I couldn't, it wouldn't let me in. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here now. Awesome, yeah, are you a member of the community or do you work with any elected officials? Let us know who you are. Mm -hmm. So um, I, my name is Soul, and I have a nonprofit organization called Soul to Souls, and I'm a former adjunct at um, Mega Evers College, as well as a few other CUNY colleges, LIU. And um, right now, you know, I started and I'm running my own nonprofit focused on um, social emotional development, youth development, um, self development college and career preparation. And one of the caveats is creating issue-based films that help the youth to express what it is they think and they feel. And just as a plug, I am doing a food distribution drive um, for at least 100 families on Juneteenth, right at the corner of Franklin and Eastern Parkway on June 19th. That is awesome great. Everybody, and like if people have things like maybe some flyers or information that they want to share with the community. And if you have masks, I was thinking if we could give away some masks and things like that, that would be, you know, an amazing thing to do. And um, I have a quick question. Riel, are you the person with the trailblazers? Yes. Okay. So I remember the last time I was at the meeting, um, you talked about your program and I have a student who's, I have a person, a high school intern that's graduating who's, who's interested, but I didn't know the information and I can't do a chat. I couldn't do a chat. Send them to trailblazers.org, trailblazers.org. There's a okay. big yes, pop I'll up that trailblazers.org it shows. Um, and, uh, and we hire as young as 16 this year, by the way. Okay, excellent. So do you yes. have a website? I do. It's soul at it's soul two souls dot org. So I'll stand up because people get confused on the spelling is kind of confusing. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Soul Thank two you souls. So much. Soul yeah. two souls. Mm -hmm. Is it soul of you? Okay. 
Did you get it? Um, did you get it, Melanie? Um, S O U L, the number two, and so yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. That was awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, so Mr. Maurice Cummings, are you all set to greet us, sir? <laughs> if not, we have next year planning on our agenda as well. I'll go first. I'd really like to make sure that we recognize Jackie Robinson Day and our community. I would love for it to be an annual event that we make sure, even if Melanie is not on this board, that it is a staple in our community. This is a, a, a huge part of the history in our community. And I don't know anyone else that's doing it. So um, I would always wanna make sure that the community board is involved and, and acknowledging Jackie Robinson Day. Uh, we have a whole stadium that was in our community where we reside. And it is important for us to share this history with our young people and our adults to make them aware the grounds that you're walking are historic and you too can be the first. So I didn't share it in the opening, um, in the opening um, but there was a trolley um, in our community this year. And the trolley did go to places you know, where Jackie Robinson lived, where Jackie Robinson played, and, you know, um, Jackie Robinson way. And it was, it meant a lot to be able to pay homage to our hometown hero. So I wanted to open us up with that. Uh, and so we did have a whole proposal that was sent out this year, um, but I just want to put it out there in reference to next year. I just want to make sure that Community Board 9 recognizes and looks to make sure that Jackie Robinson Day is, is a day that we do something. <coughs> so, Melody. Jackie Robinson Day? When is Jackie Robinson Day? So Jackie Robinson Day is April 15th every year. Melanie, I knew it now. It's because of you. I'm sorry. Said I knew the date now. Say that's because of you because I I um, I didn't know before. Um, so by the way, you know Melanie should be on this board still. So let's start with that. Um, but um, I I it, you know I think it's a great idea that needs that we. We should just kind of preemptively plan and then dedicate enough time to. Let me back up a little bit and say, you know, obviously this has been a this has been a very challenging year for everybody. It's also challenging, I think, to you know, to, to run these committees. But I do appreciate, really appreciate, the effort of this group to come together and and uh, and you know and try, right? Because that's the first thing, just to show up and try. And what I'm hoping for is that next year, you know, this, 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 uh, some kind of modest initial steps that were taken this year can really lead to a kind of booming, very productive committee next year, right? Around the structure, the mission statement that was established, the way we do business with our, you know, uh, um, through consensus, um, some of the great ideas, the book fair and the Jackie Robinson Day. And then you know, we really should be able to be out the gate running next year, uh, having, some, having some set events, and then also being able to be more productive around really you know, getting information out to the community around your know, education needs um, that, we, uh, that we kind of recognize that we see. So, I, so I, I think we have the makings of 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 a uh, of a super functional great committee and i really appreciate um, that you know all of you showed up you know and that we we gave it a shot this year right this this committee hadn't been had been going for a while and i think you know we set it up to really start um uh, start performing um into next year and uh, uh, so and so certainly my uh, vote is for a jackie robinson celebration planned way in advance next year Wonderful. Yeah, that sounds really great for us to be able to keep some of the structures of the different events that we've worked on this year. So, so we know we'll have Robinson Day, we'll have our book fair, uh, we'll have 
I don't know if we want to have the spelling bee again, if that's, you know, a yearly thing that we want to do. Um, we know that we had the uh, uh, diversity uh, team from uh, DOE uh, having to do with the specialized high school admissions test. And they did refer to September as one <clears throat> of the times to be able to advertise and make folks aware of the opportunity um, for you know students to be able to take that test. Um, so maybe that's one of the first things we can do in September. Um, you know, school just started. Folks are kind of amped. Um, we would just be coming back from summer vacation. Um, so we would be coming back with an intention and a purpose. So I'm just putting that out there as. Um, Mm hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it'd be great to do something with them because I, I thought that that presentation was super helpful and, and interesting. Um, I think it is uh, that that's definitely the kind of thing that we need to get out there more broadly right? and organize sessions around to, for parents to participate in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just there, right? We have the, the, the specialized high school, the book fair, your potentially a more recreational event, whether it's a spelling bee or not. Um, that's great. A um, uh, the Jackie Robinson Day, you know, those are really four, I think, very worthwhile initiatives that you know we could we could you know we could agree to work on for next year, and then we would already be light years ahead of this year. Yeah, like we know we know Jackie Robinson Day is on April fifteenth, so that's already a date we know. Um, I don't know if we want to discuss this, when we would want to discuss this further, but when would we want to do the spelling bee um, next year? When would we want to do um, the book the book fair um, giveaway um, next year? Do we want to like keep the same weekends we had this year as some earlier? <clears throat> Well, yeah, I think we just to map out a whole agenda, uh, a whole calendar, right? And, and just preset all the events. Uh, preset the, the lead for the subcommittees for each, right? Uh, and, and in a way, we can get all of that done before we adjourn in June, right? Uh, get get all that done. Um, I do think one of the things that we, we never really got around to is some further, some more recruitment um, for folks to join us. You know, perhaps we can start with Sol and recruiting her onto the uh, onto the committee. Mm -hmm. Careful what you wish for. Um, <laughs> Um, how did we? Rails, when you get a chance, I'd like to add something more to your calendar. This is the mm -hmm. Miss Almano. Mm -hmm. So, yes, and, and, and Miss Almano, hey, Beverly, you were saying, and then we'll go to Miss Almano. When we first started the committee, we were talking about how we could support what, what did it look like us supporting families and schools and teachers. We never really cemented that. And what does the library component look like? Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something that can be at the very, very, very beginning of this committee for next year. Yep. Oh, good. That's a good point. That's a real good point. Well, we and I want actually, to start that now, um, before September, because you don't you don't want to wait until school is in session and you know it, it'll, you'll get an influx of I need support I need support so but what but but I think the discussion that was happening around that topic was one would there be a subcommittee within the committee that would address that or two would it be the whole committee coming to a particular vision of what that looks like and then we're moving forward on it so but we never like i was saying we never cemented that and i think that is is um uh, that was a part especially the library part and the support part were totally um for lack of a better word forgotten in a time that um, um, I think us being in this pandemic kind of made it uncomfortable on where we would stand in that, but not knowing whether we're gonna be in a pandemic as far as schools are concerned, meaning they're still involved in remote learning next year, that would make us not start now with that too. So I'm just well, putting it out there 
I think that's what the the why the the, the survey is well timed now, right? That's something that we really kind of uh, and I um, uh, I'm, I'm partially responsible for that as well. As are you, Beverly? We are, we kicked the can down the road on the survey, but but I, I also think your principles were are perpetually snowed under this year, right? So so again, I think this might be better timed to say to principals now, now you are kind of resetting for September. How can this community board support you? And that can then guide our conversation to potentially you know, add other either larger or smaller initiatives. Um, but you know, to the extent that we can build a, a calendar right, for the year and, and have at least a tentative one done in June, um, and yeah, we can, and I think we can, we can, you know, it's 831 now, we can do that at the next meeting, then we can end the year with a full calendar in place and at least kind of tentative groups in place for each one of those events. So by the time we, we come back and, you know, by the time we come back, that, that assumes a number of things, right? That assumes that this committee is still intact, that assumes that the, you know, the same people leading it, assumes that we have the same chair at the, uh, at, at, the, at the board level. So there's a whole bunch of assumptions in there, and that's, yes. and that's to be seen. But you know, under the absolute worst case scenario, we can set up a, the, the committee in the future to, to, to really uh, you know, take off in September. Right, because yeah, of the I, I totally, education uh, and library, correct? Yes. I, Sorry. I totally, I totally agree because there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening. So you got to make sure if you want to continue the the um, legacy of the first, you would have to set it up before it becomes. So. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. One of the things I was thinking um, when 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 emailing um, Lewis Thomas, I think it would be great if if he could actually share. Um, the listing of the schools within the district so that when we have things, we can also, they'll already be on like a listserv and we can, you know, continue to have dialogue with them consistently, invite them to our meetings. They can share some of the events, you know, as, as guests, you know, just so we have that communication going. We already know their information, you know, like we should definitely have like Mega Evers College to have like a representative from the school present as one of the members of our guests, you know, just engage more um, with our committee, uh, our committee. Um, and, you know, another area that I'm thinking about is I want to make sure that we're okay and that we're being represented. Um, you know, like, you know, we come together and we have our committee meetings, but, um, you know, I want to make sure that our committee is structured in such a way like today, um, I was happy to be able to step in. Um, I want to make sure that we're covered in cases where if real doesn't feel well, you know, he's one person, you know, making sure we do have a chair and a co-chair for our committee, making sure that we do have a secretary, making sure that we always have the minutes so that when we you know, have the meeting, we know what the minutes are, you know, before the meeting, making sure that we're represented during our general meeting. Um, I honestly wish more people were aware um, that we did have this specialized high school, you know, diversity team with us, you know, because the community is not in this particular meeting. So those general meetings are an opportunity for them to know what's happening in education and community board not. Um, what has been recently discussed? Um, you know, those pieces are, you know, an important part of those general meetings and they really make those meetings what they are. Um, so, you know, you know, I'm, I'm looking to hope we have that um, in, you know, in 20, in the fall of 2021 and the spring of 2022. Um, so I was curious to kind of want to ask, um, you know, as a new person coming in, you know, I am a person that's about doing things, not just sitting back or just making suggestions and not following through stuff like that. Like, I want to be a person that is helpful. But you know, I've been coming to a couple of meetings, and I'm not trying to like overstretch myself. So I've been selective. 
Um, but these are all the areas that I'm very passionate about. And so as a new person, how can I help? You know, like what steps do I take? I think it is, I don't know if a lot of people necessarily know about the community board. It's only because one of my former supervisors used to be involved and we all lived in this, this neighborhood that I kind of found out about it. But I hadn't really, heard, you know, known much about what is a community board, what do they do? And so when the pandemic hit, I just started thinking about all the things that I always said I was going to do and didn't. And this was like one of the things that I was like, oh, you know, I need to get involved with this. But how do you think we can like get more of the information out, have, you know, people involved, you know, just and what can I do as a new person who wants to be of support? I'm well, I'll, <laughs> um, well, first of all, Melody, those were, I think, excellent comments, and I, I, I agree that there's there's a there's a lot of kind of ongoing or kind of continued development uh, of of this group to to, to lift the performance uh, up. Um, I um, <clears throat> so, you know, these are these are committees that are entirely kind of you know, people fueled, right? For people who are just interested in doing something that, you know, they can get their hands dirty. And so you you help by coming with an idea or are, or are willing to pitch in on somebody else's idea, right? Okay. There's one of those two. You either pitch in on somebody else's idea or you, you bring your own idea and you and you rally people around it. The um, And then, you know, I think the kind of larger goal of the community is dissemination of resources and information, right? And so, Melody makes an excellent point that that means we have to build better lists so information can actually be pushed out and people know that something is coming or know that something is worthwhile as discussed. Um, you know, I'm personally feel, feeling pretty pretty confident and, and optimistic about next year because we have a, we we not we finally have a district manager, right? So a lot of the the, the structure that that the you know the the, the community board. And don't get me wrong, Khalid, me and Khalid are phenomenal, but only two people, right? And uh, and, and they, I think, are perpetually snowed under and, and cannot handle everything either, as they shouldn't. And so having a district manager, I think, will help the committees also become better organized, and we should take advantage of that. And uh, and hopefully, you know, again, my, my goal would be, my hope would be is that we build, we continue to build a committee that then is just that is not dependent on the individuals per se, but the structure is there, it sustains itself, right? And leadership change, people change, and that's fine, but the committee continues to serve the community. That sounds good. That's the way it should be. I don't know if I right. put the two cents in there. I wanted to add the possible date to your calendar. Uh, I have okay, I've been, for, I, I was at the youth committee and I, I'm, pushing an idea of having a CB9 family fun field day at one of yeah. the parks. Mm -hmm. uh, so far in the discussion, the youth committee will start to work in it. This is something I'm seeing that will involve almost all the committees within CB9. I'm going to take one of the parks. My suggestion will be the Boys and Girls High School field, which will probably be good enough. And we will have a two-day event. Why two days? Because some people are Sabbath over on Saturday. So if they cannot come Saturday, they can come Sunday. So the, all the activities that the education committee is doing, like, it would be like a back-to-school event where you probably be able to give at school supply, book bags, uh, materials. And if you already have your spelling bee, this will be an event where you could announce the winner of the salary and do a trophy presentation. And within that field, you will have the health committee bring all the hospital and all the health people that they are working with to have booth or tent where they could do their health screening or whatever screening we try to that. We could invite the business in the community to become vendors to bring the food in there, especially during COVID, it's something which is outdoor. And uh, I don't know, and but this is something that I think mostly toward the youth, and the, the youth will bring their parents along. So we'll have different field activities. 
musical performance had an idea an idea we're proposing maybe i don't i don't see that too much around here the battle of the bands or battle of the dj where you have local djs could have a few minutes a 15 minutes period to present a set and then you have a set of judges to judge it so you bring everybody out so that way you get every committee involved and the target date so far the youth committee was looking at was will be late august or a week or two after Labor Day. Outdoor event, following all the protocols and all the stuff. And uh, the education, I will have, I, I also, I will surely encourage all the institution that we interface with the board will be there. The Brooklyn Museum, the Botanical Garden, whatever other organization within the community that would like to come to bring their information and their literature and all this stuff. That's the idea I'm trying to push, as to use our parks within the CB9 uh, confine. I don't know what, I'd like to bring that up and for you guys to discuss and what you think about it and see this is something worthwhile. That's that exciting. <laughs> That's it's, it, it's definitely worthwhile. What field were you referring to? I feel I'm referring to is the field that it's on, it's right across King's Book during the hospital between Schenectady and Troy, uh, and between Watland Road and um, that's that's um three three ninety uh, old three ninety one. No, no, the, all it is is a field, the football field that was in no, the no, high school I, used to use for their football program. There's been a lot of uh, sports. Isn't that Wingate? It's not Wingate. No, it's, it's, it's before it's a Wingate. Of, it's before Wingate. It's oh. on Watland Road between Troy and Schenectady. Not too okay. far from Jackie Robinson uh, Middle School there. I mean, if it's, uh, is the event is big enough, yeah. if it's too big, then we should probably look for Wingate Phil. I'm not familiar. Huh? So who who <laughs> is organizing this? Ms. Almanor is the... This is a proposal I'm making for CB9 to put together the whole community board to put a family fun day where we would put CB9 out there with everything that, that we are doing. Oh wait, there think was a family fun day over the I mean um it was one I think probably before the summer ended. They had somebody had something in that field. They did. Yeah. I was not aware of it. Okay. Yeah, and, and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it was either last year or the year before last that I walked Robert? past there and they had something in the field. Oh, okay. You know what field I'm talking about, right? It's it's yeah, they play. Um, usually, they play soccer in there. A lot of a lot of teams. Correct. Play correct. Correct. Oh, can you hear me, sir? Tournament, yeah. Soccer tournaments there. Mm -hmm. If it's where I think it is, that is not near Jackie Robinson Middle School. <laughs> no, well, Jackie Robinson is about a block away. It's near oh. Kings. King. Yeah, Kings. Um, it's near a hospital, right? Yeah, it's near Kings Book. Yeah, I know where that is. Kingsburg, Kingsburg, Kingsburg Jewish Hospital, yeah. So the only thing is that's not within our community board, right? Like that's not within our community it board. Is. It is. It is. It is all the way to Unity Avenue. It is? So yes. that's right across the street from my house. So I know that it is part of uh, CB9. And that Correct. field permit goes through Department of Education. That's Correct. the Department of Education. It's a like, facility. facility. Yeah, they have Cricket. They have Barbados Day, mm -hmm. Guyana Day. This is before the pandemic started. There's right. a lot of events um, in that field, a lot. Our area core covers a lot. That that yes. means a big deal. That's insane. There should be so many more people. OK, I can't. I'm going to go on <laughs> a tangent. That's great. I know exactly where that is. And my daughter right. used to actually play football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over there, yeah, okay. Well, that's, I think this is an activity the whole community board can get involved in. Get I think it's great. The all I'm the committee involved. So I, I'm visiting different committees since I'm not in charge of park recreation and culture to see if we use the parks within our, uh, our community board to a lot more use. 
I just I just only <laughs> wish that it could be on a day where everyone could be there because I feel like Crown Heights okay. is already um, unique. Um, and I know that you're looking to uh, make sure everyone can attend by, it looks like you're looking at a Saturday and a Sunday. Right. Um, I don't know. I know it's a proposal, so I don't know if, if 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 there was some other day that is like a holiday that's not religious, or right. a day where people are like off. You know what I mean? So we can try to avoid having two events, right? Just so people can be together. That that's my only. That's my only. Well, that's a great suggestion, but probably why well, we let's look well, let's look for a day because when I present that this week at the uh, youth committee, so that's why they were thinking because we see we have some people can be there Saturday, some people can be there Sunday. If we could find a day, but it would be great to have it as a back to school activity a little bit either before Labor Day or after Labor Day. Well, why not on Labor Day? Because I mean, what's really going on? We don't have the the way you call it the parade or what? stuff going on. They might, have, they, 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 might, have it. It might happen. They might have it. Uh, and also, a lot, have people it will, a lot of people will go on vacation. They might. They might. They might. They, they might because everything is starting to open back up. So they might just have it. it. Okay. You know, I, I love the idea of a CB9, you know, full CB9 family day that involves all the committees. I, it seems to me that that is something that the, uh, that, that, uh, that really the office then should be the lead on, not, uh, not an individual committee. The timing can be tough, right? Uh, because the committees kind of go dark over the summer. Right. Um, yeah. So that, uh, I think that makes it tough to organize something for late August. Unless we're just doing it for the board, but that's, <laughs> I mean, you know, we got to well, but, but let's have well, that would be what, fine too. Yeah, so but what, can, like, can... what is it, what does it really take to, like, get the ball rolling and, like, try to get it, you know, started or whatever the case may be and do, and e even though it sounds like, I guess, um, we're not as functional over the <clears> summer, <throat> Is there like maybe people that could take key responsibilities and then have a small community that um, a small committee that works on it to make it happen? Um, like right after the fall, is that a realistic thing or would it just have to be when like when does things stop and then when does things start? Well, well, part of it is that it can be assumed that this is the committee. Because the chair has to sign the committee chair, the, the, the chair of the board has to sign the, the chairs of the committee. And so all of that is going to happen in the next two months. Right? So, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, so it's not that this committee goes dark. It's like the, the, the committees, they essentially disband right, at the end of the year. And then they are kind of re regroup at the beginning of the year based on what the, uh, what the chair and the district manager cook up. All right, so the end of the year is considered June and then the beginning is September? Yes. But I Although I don't, I don't think we got up and running I, until October last year. Right, but I, I think this is something we should change. For example, to really completely go dark in uh, the two, I mean, at least you could meet and do some planning even though you don't have a regular schedule legally mandated committee meeting. So I think I'm going to make the same appeal to the chair of the board and see what he thinks about this particular idea and see how we can move forward to it. Because the people at the community, they were very enthusiastic about it. Because one person said they're going to try to contact uh, different organizations like WET and where they can get some support and all the stuff. So the idea, I'm just putting the idea out there because I'm um, trying to see if we can get a lot more attention parks in the day in the board my sense in my observation is a lot of activities have been happening in more into the north of the district rather than the south there hasn't been too much activity prospect lefferts garden and wingate and that particular field is in the wingate area Okay. Um, is there a way to also get uh, like contact information um, if I wanted to email to further talk to folks? 
Yeah, well, we'll have to, uh, Khalid, if you can uh, uh, add salt to the CB9 distribution list, I think that'd be uh, that'd be helpful. Is that okay? Yeah, we'll do. I'm I'll on add some lists. I don't know which list I'm on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but we'll um, um, yeah. Um, we can we can get you on that list to make sure. Can you make sure the uh, CB9 office has your email address? Sure. How do I do that? Oh, just send it to CB9. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think it's good that there be one core committee for this particular. Oh initiative. no, absolutely. I think probably all the I think the core committee should be the all the chairs of the various committee. There should be and, a core committee. To do that. Yeah, and then to disseminate, you know, what's needed, and then whomever, you know, right. would want to chime in and assist mm -hmm. or or give whatever resource, um, you know, see where we can get the resource because now you can put it in the meeting. You could you could ask certain uh, business entity if they want to sponsor and so on and so forth. Especially you could get the hospitals and uh, well, you the different. And you you can get a sponsors. lot of sponsors because there's a new, there's going to be some new elected officials in the community. So right. mm -hmm. they're going to want to make, they're going to want to make their presence felt by Absolutely. offering right. whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm so, even thinking in some of the health, you have think, uh, a company like F Plus that have their recruiting van. Usually they, they sponsor some of these kind of activities. Health plus, uh, uh, well, they will come, well, they'll bring the event like they have in front of the hospital, and uh, all these people can be appealed to for such an activity. Yeah, you also definitely want to connect with um, Arna Lipkin of Council Member uh, Lori Cumbo's office uh, because she uh, leads the One Crown Heights event that happens every year. Mm -hmm. And right. I don't know, hmm? well, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, I mean, it might even tie it in because uh, that's every August. Okay. Well, that's, uh, well, that's more or less, that's more or less some of the same idea I'm talking about. If you do one corner heights where you bring all the community together, then why don't we have one left garden, one wind gate of the events also? But I think we should put all our area together to do one CB9 event. Similar and to if that. you're going to use, I'm sorry, if you're going to use Lori Cumbo's office, um, you need to get in touch with her ASAP because she's not going to be, um, you know, her position is up. No, she, she's she's still limited. She'll be done by January. Well, yeah. the idea, what I like to do is that uh, tomorrow, I think I'm going to talk with the chair of the board and discuss the idea and see how, how what he thinks about it, how he thinks we should proceed if he does agree with it, and, uh, and we take it from there. And then we'll start, I think we should put together a call for meeting of all the community chairs and then uh, plan the event. Would you awesome. guys like for me to check with the, um, the guy who works in the field? They just reopened, but I could oh. find out if they're taking permits. Did they start? Please do. Permits. It Please was do. Close the whole Please time. Do. They just do. opened. So I could check with him and shoot out an email to you because I, yes. I see him every day. Please do. I would love that. I would love that. Okay, his name is Mike. I'll, I'll ask him. And the schools have their field. They used to have field day there every year also. Mm, okay. if, you know, if you guys know where the location is. So I can ask him. Yes, please. I'll shoot an email out to you guys. See what he says. Look at that connection. Mm -hmm. okay, oh, I don't know what happened there. Good. So um, I'm, I'm just looking at the time. I also have to put, stop putting my daughter to bed. Um, um, Melody, did, did, was there anything else on the uh, agenda that we have to take care of tonight? No, just want to make sure that everybody's aware our next meeting would be the second, you know, as always, is the second week in June. So that would be Tuesday, June 8th, correct? Tuesday, June 8th. And the last meeting of the board will be on uh, in lieu of uh, voting day, I believe. It would have been the 22nd. It's going to be Wednesday, <laughs> June 23rd, and that'll be it. So our last meeting is on um, Tuesday, um, June 8th. So at the general meeting, uh, we'll be, you know, hopefully announcing, <laughs> you know, these two upcoming events. 
um, and we'll be all set. Great. And so we'll we'll discuss uh, some of the items that we were talking about in the last 20 minutes or so, focused on setting an agenda for next year, at least a tentative agenda, discussing some of the additional structures that this committee needs in order to be successful, and uh, seeing if we can discuss tentative leadership for each one of these tasks. And uh, and hopefully that'll set up this committee to be uh, to be very productive and, uh, and very, have a very strong start in the new year with whoever is uh, is is here um, I think that uh, that is exciting um, and and also of course we'll we'll hear from Demetra and you hear from Demetra um, you'll hear from me on the two events that uh, that will then have in June and that will wrap the year for us um, Melanie thank you for stepping in today very appreciative appreciative of that um, and um, and um, uh, if is there anybody have any final comments, any final closing comments or uh, concerns? No, just that we just continue to send positivity Dexter's way as he's battling right now with this, this COVID. Oh, I missed that. I apologize. I did not hear that. Uh, I am sorry to hear that, Mr. Roberts. Uh, good luck. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes we need reminders that this is still here, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, best of health to everybody. Um, you'll be hearing from either Dimitri or myself on the upcoming events. And um, and perhaps once we hear from, a, from our district manager about WhatsApp, you'll see an invite coming through for a WhatsApp group. And maybe we can test that out. Have a wonderful yeah. evening, everybody. Melanie, can I get your email address, Melanie? Um, M-E-S-H-A-L-E-2 at AOL.com. All right, that was quick. M-E-S-H-A-L-E-2 at AOL.com, but you'll see it on the listserv that you'll be added. Okay. Yes, I wanted to know about the person with the specialized schools. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you guys. I'm really looking forward to getting to know everybody more. <laughs> and I hope I didn't say anything off-putting, so I'm just making sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a good night. Well, good night. Bye, Naomi. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good night.